Hi, I'm Holly Searson, The Reluctant Reader, and um, today I'm very happy to be joined by Cassandra Windwalker, who is the author of the newly released Idle Hands. Hi, Cassandra. Hello, Holly. Thank you so much for doing this. No worries. It's a pleasure to talk to you, and thank you so much for joining us so early on in your day, as I know that obviously you're based in Alaska. Um, so to get us going, I wanted to do something fun so that we can get to know each other a little bit better. Um, so a couple of quick questions as a bit of an icebreaker. So if you were to be stranded on a desert island and you could take three things with you, what would they be? Oh, dear. Um, I suppose it's still would be important. Um, a Bible and a knife. Okay. Um, any particular reasons why those three things? Well, if I'm going to be alone on a desert island, I'm definitely going to need some alcohol to survive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm definitely going to need God's help. And with a knife, I can build, I can hunt, I can probably injure myself so <laughs> okay. all very very valid reasons okay <laughs> all right second question um i know that you're into nature photography from your insta um, and i do love some of your photos that we talked mentioned before so if you could be any animal what would you be and why hmm. that's such a difficult one i feel like i change my answer on that all the time um, i suppose right now i would say a whale I'm, I'm fascinated by how far they travel and the close relationships that they maintain and the intricacies, of course, of their language. Okay, good. Very nice. I do love a whale. I've got a funny story, actually, about going whale watching the last time that I was in Boston about two years ago. And we took a four-hour trip out to see some whales and all we saw was a fin. <laughs> and it was four, four hours backwards. That's very sad. It was, it was really, really, really disappointing. But we were so excited. But there you go. Um, okay, question number three. Um, if you could have any celebrity or another author na uh, narrate your book, Idle Hands, who would you pick and why? Oh, gosh. Hmm. That's very difficult. It, it would have to be a female because Ella, of course, is our narrator and she's female. So who would I pick? Hmm. I'm going to go with Nicola Walker because she has a sort of um, this rough tenderness to her expression that I think would lend well to a lot of Ella's conflicts. Okay. And final quick interesting question. What is the most interesting fact about yourself that you're happy to tell us? I have no interesting facts about myself. That's why I write about other people. <laughs> very good comeback very good okay very very good I like that I'm impressed okay right. so let's move on to you more as a writer um so obviously Idle Hands isn't your first radio in the author world is it so can you tell us a little bit about how you got into writing and and what previous books you've written well I think I I think I was a writer uh pretty much since the time I was able to speak I actually have really early memories of before I had language verbally and and things that I would tell myself, sort of stories I would tell myself in my mind even as an infant, but I would account my interest in writing as a craft to my father partly and he would not appreciate that at all because he finds it um, very irrational in terms of a career. <laughs> But my father read to me uh, when I was very young. One of my earliest memories is of him reading me The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, which just absolutely fascinated me. And shortly after that, I stole his college literature book, which I devoured and absolutely loved. And then when I was in fourth grade, I had a teacher whose name was Carol Hamilton. And she was a writer herself. And she had a real gift for encouraging and bringing people along and she really encouraged me to write. She encouraged me to write my first book of poetry, which was unspeakably terrible. And she never told me that. <laughs> so I, I think I got started very young and never really veered off that course. OK, 
Okay. And what books have you written? Um, obviously, you mentioned your poetry, but other than that, you've got, I know that you've got at least one other book, haven't you, before Idle Hands? Yes. Uh -huh. I, have, I have three novels. Parable of Pronouns is a contemporary fairy tale, a little bit on the erotic side that follows the reincarnations of Adam and Eve up to modern history. Okay. Uh, Bury the Lead is a psychological thriller about a newspaper editor who frames himself for the murder of his missing girlfriend. And Preacher Sam is a, sort of a classic cozy murder mystery, except that the main character is a sex addicted outcast former preacher. So not quite as cozy as, as most in the genre. Yeah. Okay. So obviously, I guess those, those novels have kind of evolved into your latest, I guess you could say potentially. Um, and would you say your sweet spot is, is kind of that that thriller, that crime, that, that sort of deep and meaningful kind of uh, narrative? Probably. I think, you know, what fascinates me, which probably is what fascinates every writer, is just conflict. Um, and I don't think there's any greater conflict than the conflict that a person has with themselves. That's mm -hmm. really the most compelling sort of story. And I think you can set that up in any genre and, and any time period, any style of writing, but that's what you're really looking for is, is what, what is the human. Definitely, definitely. Okay, so for, for those who haven't read it yet, can you give us a bit of a teaser of Idle Hands, please? Ah, you and your hard questions. <laughs> so Idle Hands is a story told from the viewpoint of Purdy, or from Ella, who most of us would know as the devil but she represents herself very, very differently than the classic stories of the devil that most of us have heard. She sees herself as more of a Prometheus. She's bringing fire to man. She is offering a different choice, a truer choice. And she's just trying to help you make decisions. Um, but you might be wary of trusting her entirely as, as she leads you along those courses and, and brings you to those crossroads. In this particular story, she's dealing with a a young mother named Purdy, who has fled from a very abusive marriage and has formed a, a very happy, successful life since that. But something random happens, something chaotic happens and upheaves Purdy's whole life and makes her question whether or not the best decision for her children was really to leave that relationship or if she might have been able to save them if she'd stayed. And the devil allows her to find out. It is such a good book and when I read it I, I, I genuinely mean that I haven't read anything quite like it before in terms of that like you say talking about conflict internal conflict within an individual and I think very much what what limits would a person go to 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 make a change especially for those that they love and I think the two ways in which that you depict the difference um, the different roots of how things could have panned out in in that person and and their their children's lives was was really interesting um and fascinating as well it was very gripping uh so i i was just really happy to read it um so what what would you say has been your journey with idle hands that has got you to this point kind of like how long has it taken to you to write it and where have you drawn your inspiration from for the story and in particular for Ella? Well, Idle Hands didn't take very long at all to write. I think every book I've written has sort of had its own timeline. A lot of times people will ask, how long does it take to write a book? And that depends entirely on the book. Um, in this case, it only took a couple of months to write the book. I think when you, I call myself a method writer, like a method actor in the sense that I really tend to live the story through my narrator. And when your narrator is the devil, that's incredibly intense, um, especially a devil like, like Ella. You know, she's very, very passionate, very engaged. She's intensely engaged with people. And so you can't afford to have her in your head for too long. But now I can't get her back out. <laughs> I can say, she's been loving for too long. She's definitely going to cause some chaos, that's for sure. Yes, yes, and, and, and she, she definitely has. But the book itself didn't take very long to write at all. Um, and I was really fortunate to find uh, Agora Books 
uh, as quickly as I did. I, I was expecting a very long haul and trying to find a home for this book, but uh, the editors there were really passionate about the story and, and did so much to help bring it along. Uh, I was really grateful for that. Yeah, I'm not surprised that they picked it up quickly. It's very unique. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's great. Um, would you say that there's an underlying message within Idle Hands, despite it being a piece of fiction? It's a little difficult. Of course, I, I have this fondness for the unreliable narrator. Uh, unreliable narrators pop up from time to time in my writing, and Ella is definitely the epitome of that. But I think she is right about one thing, in that we very often, as human beings, become so self-obsessed that we imagine the entire universe hangs on every one of our choices. And we don't make room for the randomness and the chaos that, that dictates things. We want a reason for why bad things happen. And I think a lot of that, honestly, is, is fear. If, if we can control what happens around us, if we're never really a victim, then, then we have power and we can prevent bad things from happening. And we can make sure that we're never in that position again, when in reality, we don't have that much power and, and bad things are going to happen no matter what we do. Yeah, we definitely do like to say that everything happens for a reason and kind of justify that in a good or a bad way, I guess. So, um, okay. So do you, two questions now, is there going to be a sort of, is Ella going to feature in another story or is she done as a character for now? Because I know that obviously you said she's kind of still lingering around in your head as an author. Um, and then second question, what is your favorite part of Idle Hands? I can't imagine a situation in which Ella would return simply because I think any reader who has read through Idle Hands will know Ella so well that they wouldn't trust her to tell them another story. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair she's, reply. She's yeah. definitely still around, but I don't know if I could sucker any readers in a second time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think my, my favorite part of Idle Hands is actually the very ending scene. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's because you get to see an, an emotion from Ella that you haven't really seen throughout the book. Um, and it's also because you get to see her last encounter with someone who was a friend once. And in that moment, she's sharing this scene with this former friend who doesn't even acknowledge her presence. And it it's really sets you up for everything that Ella is. Uh, she's, she's, she's terribly lonely. Mm. But that loneliness doesn't necessarily urge her to make different choices than the ones she makes. But she walks with that loneliness. Yeah, nature of, of being who she is and, and her role, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's next for you as an author and where can readers pick up their copy of Idle Hands? Idle Hands, you can find the, probably the easiest way for everyone to get it right now is to just go on Amazon. Um, I know it's available in both the UK and the United States, and you can get it in audio or print or ebook, whatever format you prefer. The next project that I'm working on right now, I have two. Uh, the first is called Ghost Girls and Rabbits. It has to deal with the issue of the missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls here on the North American continent. It's a it's basically an invisible genocide that's taking place, and so this story deals with that from the viewpoint of a thriller, again, um, but a very internal thriller, again. <laughs> um, and the other project I'm working on is a, a third book of poetry that I'm trying to get pulled together. Brilliant. It all sounds very, very exciting. So I'll, uh, we'll keep our eyes out, obviously, for, for your new works. But definitely, if you haven't read Idle Hands, I would definitely recommend going out and getting yourself a copy. Um, unfortunately, we, you've obviously just missed out on our competition to win a paperback version of the book. Um, so we hope that Graham, who won, really enjoys it. And we can't wait to see his, his feedback when he's read it. And thank you again to Agora Books for kind of helping us to make this happen, as well as thank you for your time. All right, Cassandra, thank you very much. And um, I'll speak to you hopefully again at some point in the future. Sounds wonderful. Thank you so much, Holly. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.